Woo! Man, I tell ya. I tell ya. Welcome, you guys. It is Donovan Sadiq. I am back from the Dominican Republic, from the Sioux. From the Sioux is where I was at, and I'm telling you, I uh, had a great time. I am sad to be back, but I got to handle some business here in the United States as I got uh, medical issues to deal with and all other stuff. But hey, you guys, my, my name is Donovan Sadiq. I am the recovering Democrat, also known as the IE informer in my, in my local neighborhood. No sooner did I get back than I found out that uh, graffiti was happening, you know, the Duke of Edgemont leaves, and all of a sudden... Uh, you know, the neighborhood goes to hell in a high and in, in, in high waters. But I'm glad to be back. It's raining today. Today is February 23rd. It is 9 a.m. And I, I wanted to knock this out real quick and and kind of get to uh, some of the things that has been going on. When I was in the Dominican Republic, um, you know, just enjoying myself, having a great time, um, you know, veteran status, going to the clinic. I was there for Super Bowl. Oh, my God, fellas, get your passports, get your passports, get your passports. Now, I'm going to say this. When I say get your passports, please remember you're a representative of the goddamn United States. Could you guys please remember that? You are a representative and an ambassador of the United States. And, you know, it was appalling. Number one, when I saw young men acting the way they were acting, that's to be expected. Okay, I'm not saying it's right, but that's to be expected. They're young. They don't know what they're doing. They're very inexperienced, right? But when I saw the older men my age acting uh, a certain way, I was a little bit appalled, okay? My mother always told me, it ain't what you do. It's how you do it. So, uh, again, brothers, get your passports. Stop sitting here dealing with this bullshit, delusional women, that don't respect you, they've already told you, they don't want you, you ain't shit, you ain't no good, you ain't this, you ain't that, whatever. It's amazing how as a black man, if I told you those exact words in your face, you'd be ready to fight or cut me or even kill me. But these women uh, put all this bullshit out and, you know, it's automatically the truth. You know what? We've been dealing with this for over 40 years. The disrespect and, 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 and just the, the delusion, okay? I'm not against, I love, I love my black women. I love my black, my children are black, I love black women, but the, the, the fact of the matter is the traditional woman does not exist, or I, at least I haven't found her, okay? I cannot deal with a modern woman, and that's another thing, fellas, you gotta really look at yourself and ask yourself this. What type of woman do you wanna deal with? And you're going to hear all these, you know, how many of you guys have heard the negative stereotypes? Oh, you're going over there sex trafficking. Oh, you're going with women that don't have any money. Oh, they're going to go over there and use you for your money. That to me, that right there was the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Those other women are going to use you for your money. What the hell do American women uh, do? What do American women do? Are they not using us for our money? What, What woman of her worth doesn't use a man in some capacity for his money and what man real man doesn't mind a good woman and providing for her see ladies one of the biggest mistakes you guys make is you guys keep repeating the same bullshit about you don't need a man you don't need a man a man's nature is to be needed so since you don't need us here Let's go overseas and find you uh, women that do need men and, and openly express that they do need men. So, fellas, get your passports. Get out there. Open your horizon. Open your options. Um, uh, you know, you guys know that, uh, you know, I do a lot of traveling. I travel most of my life. Uh, I'm not an expert or anything like that. But having flown all around the world, I can tell you uh, and people that have traveled with me say, this guy is no joke. You know, I just know how to get there. I know how to get it and I'm in and out. You know what I mean? And I don't go to countries to exploit those countries. I go to countries basically to learn the culture and be a part of the culture. And I actually assimilate into the culture. So when I was in the DR, in in the Sioux, as they call it, 
Oh my God, fellas, fellas, fellas! Great football game, great Super Bowl. If you have not been to the Dominican Republic during Super Bowl and want to watch a Super Bowl game surrounded by beautiful women, get your passports, save your money, get ready to get down there next year. And you better hurry up and book your hotel because I was lucky enough that the Airbnb that I was staying in, and it was the only one I can find, I couldn't get in a hotel or anything, um, was everything was booked up because uh, during this time, time of year, the Europeans come there f- uh, for holiday to get out of the winter of Europe. So book your hotels in advance and get that going. And I was lucky that the previous Airbnb I had stayed in uh, hooked me up. He, 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 he uh, I don't know how he did it, but I ended up staying in the same exact place I had stayed at previously. I paid a little bit more money, you know, but you know, it's the Super Bowl time or whatever. And fellas, let me tell you, let me tell you this. When the Super Bowl game was over, and now I'm in Sasua. When the Super Bowl game was over, and I like Sasua because it's a beach town, okay? Uh, a lot of Europeans there, I mean, mostly white people had taken over the, this time of year. And I had never been there this time of year. And I'm going to tell you guys that... Um, a lot of great clubs, okay? One of the most popular clubs on the main strip is a club called Rumba Kings, okay? A lot of, a lot of the young Thundercats go to the Rumba Kings. A lot of the older cats go to the Rumba Kings. It's right on the corner. You can see the taxi stands there. And if you go to YouTube, you could probably find and see it on YouTube. And, of course, as I've been saying even when I was over there, stop posting uh, the negativity of Sasua on the internet, you're, 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 you're attracting the wrong type of uh, culture to Sasua and the, Sasua and the Dominican government's going to shut it down. And I have no doubt that that's what's going to happen because they're going to be developing the beaches over there. So a lot of stuff is being messed up by these young American Thundercats bringing their uh, hood mentality to the Dominican Republic, unfortunately. But... Um, when I was down there, if you go to my YouTube page, if you guys get, ever get a chance to go there, you will see that when I travel, I enjoy and I, I assimilate myself into the, co- in, into the country. And I saw live boxing at this fairly new club that opened up. It's called Coco Locos. Okay? And it's owned by a uh, former, well, I think he's still training um, boxers. But uh, you know, he put a live ring in there. They had pool tables, hand games, dominoes. I mean, for us older cats, we could go in there, have a nice beer, and it's in the back. So, you, so when you go into the club, you're kind of in the back. And it's not far from Rumba Kings. It's right down the street. And we saw some live boxing. It was, oh, it was excellent. People were getting knocked the fuck out left and right. Uh, some, some, stops, some fights were stopped early, which we thought was bullshit, but 40 bucks to get in, live fighting, 13 fights. If you are going to the Sioux, Please, please stop at Coco Locos. Uh, Great guy. It has a boxing theme, athletic theme, excellent beer, excellent food. Uh, The staff there is very, very friendly. You know, you and you and your boys go down there, shoot some pool, have some beer, uh, all kinds, you know, play some dominoes and just enjoy. Just get out, you know, because you might not, you know, it might be early during the day. Maybe you're not a swimmer or you've already done the swimming thing. You just want to just, you definitely don't want to stay in your hotel. So just get out and, 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 and go and check that out, right? So went there, whatever the deal is. Watching the Super Bowl, it was totally packed. Super Bowl was, how much was it to get the Super Bowl? Uh, Super Bowl was free, free, packed, okay, packed, 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 packed right? But with older people, a lot of Europeans in there. Uh, we watched the game, multi-screens, all kinds of stuff. It, it was excellent, right? Super Bowl is over. Oh my gosh, you, you go out and they see that all these gringos, Americans, are, you know, we're, we're down there, right? We love football. Literally, fellas, there were chicas spilling in the street. Literally, that's how many girls were running around there. Now, I'm not trying to glorify that in the aspect of you know, the girls being there, I don't know what they were doing and I'm not going to talk about what they were doing there. What I'm saying is there was a, they were literally spilling in the streets. 
Okay, they were literally spun. So if you've seen some of the videos, that is nothing. I haven't seen any videos yet on Super Bowl night. They were spilling in the streets. Okay. So, fellas, all I can tell you is get your passports, get down there. If you've never been down there for a Super Bowl, to be at a Super Bowl situation where you're surrounded by beautiful women, all sizes, shades, and colors, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Beers were not that expensive. Uh, you know, you could really have a good time now. Um, some people go down there for nefarious uh, reasons. Um, you know, it is what it is. But what I really want to talk about is... When I, I was in the Dominican Republic for this time, 20 days. I usually stay 15 days or more and I, I, when I go visit a place. I don't care where I'm at. I try to visit a place at least a minimum of 14 days, two weeks. Because depending on where you go in the world, it might take you a whole day to get there. So you've lost a day to getting there and you're probably going to lose a day getting back. So that's two days gone. 12 days, I think, is enough to see what you want to see or whatever. But this time, I, I, I'm retired, so... I said 20 days. I could even stay longer if I wanted to. But I said, I'll stay 20 days to see, see what's going on. Because, I mean, I had my thing down pat. I had my uh, physical therapy. I had my mental therapy. I had my uh, professional massages three times a week. I'm part of the uh, foreign medical program, which is a program, especially for veterans. If you're overseas and abroad, I'm going to strongly recommend that if you are a veteran, you enroll in that program um, even though most countries are universal health care, but at least if you're uh, part of that, it's, it's through the State Department. You can uh, you could log on to the State Department thing, just put in foreign medical program, and you can sign up right here in the United States even before you go overseas. And it gives you an option of uh, if you need extended medical care, all kinds of stuff. It, it is what it is. A lot of clinics are being set up for veterans, and in the Dominican Republic, there's a lot of... Uh, expats there. I think in the Philippines, they're setting those up over there so that you don't have to come stateside to do certain things. You might have to come stateside to do a major medical procedure, but all in all to do your, your just general, uh, you know, clinic stuff, your meds and stuff, you can do it right there without having to leave your, your situation and and cost you a plane ticket. As a matter of fact, just before I started this, uh, podcast right now, I did a, uh, mental, uh, my mental therapy with my therapist in the Dominican Republic via teleconference. So the technology is there. So when I go back, I used to go to the Dominican Republic at least a minimum of twice a year. Hey, it's all there. So do not forget, enroll into the foreign medical program. And I'm going to give you guys some more information about that. When you do enroll into the foreign medical program, they're going to send you this big ass packet. It's a, it's like two, three big old things. And it tells you how the program works, what you know, it's expected of you and, you know, how you do things if you have certain problems, whatever. It tells you everything you need to know in that packet. I'm going to strongly, strongly promote that. So, but while I was in the Dominican Republic, lo and behold, what do we find? Women that are on girls' trips, which is a shadow for sex tourism. Now, me as a, a, a seasoned traveler, I've known this has been going on for years since the early 80s. Remember, Eddie Murphy talked about it in the comedy Raw. Remember how we, you know, he's like, hey, girl, we, know, we go on a road. No, no, just me and my girlfriends. We, we just going to go on a trip. Remember, he was talking about Dexter St. Jock. That's what he was talking about. But like I said in my previous videos, the difference between what the women are doing and what we're doing, fellas, is they're not uploading it and televising it until recently. There's a lady that was exposing uh, some videos that were going up and your woman who was on that girl's trip is most likely getting her cheeks clapped by Damont, the Jamaican masseuse. Believe that. The videos are there. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because isn't it very hypocritical you do not see videos of men uh, talking about uh, black women are predators and women are predators and they're doing this, they're doing that. You know, fellas, we don't need to clap back on that. You want to know why? It's a waste of energy. You do not need to clap back on that. The thing is, the video's there. We now know the truth. It's been going on for years, since the early 80s. The movie uh, How Stella Got Her Groove Back is a, uh, a montage to what 
goes on down there where these women are going down there getting their cheeks clapped and then coming back to the United States talking about I shot the sheriff but I didn't shoot the deputy you you, you know what I'm saying so uh hypocrisy at, at its at, at its best and now you don't see them saying too much now now that this stuff has been exposed but I want you guys to learn a lesson my fellas my brothers my brothers my brothers I want you guys to learn a lesson I keep talking about the movie Cocoon. Ron Howard film. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. You can use the pool as long as nobody else knows about it. Stop advertising what you are doing. You are making it very difficult for the rest of us. The revolution will not be televised. It won't be televised. If you struck a gold mine, right, is the first thing you do is yell out, oh, I got it, or modern day, you hit the lottery, is the first thing that you do is go out there and shout and tell everybody that you won the lottery? No, you want to be anonymous, you keep it secret, you keep it to yourself, you keep it to yourself, because you know that once the news gets out, everybody's going to go and uh, try to get with you, take money from you. If you, if you found a gold mine, everybody's going to come to where you found your uh, gold and try to mine around you. You found oil. They try to dig close to where you're digging. And that's what these young Thundercats don't understand. Keep your mouth shut. If it's so good, why would you want to tell anybody? Keep it a well-kept secret. And that's what these guys do not understand. So, again, um, hypocrisy at its best. These women are going down there, getting their cheeks clapped, and there's actual video of women. This one girl, she had a nice big old rump rump, and it was straight up in the air. And this guy is just massaging her cheeks. And in one video, it's been blurred out. I haven't seen the whole video myself, but it is out there where the one girl was saying she had said he's massaging her with his tally whacker let, 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 let me call it a tally whacker okay and he's just painting her with his tally whacker and she made a comment of get a, a trash bag or something of that nature if he's going to penetrate get a trash bag so fellas if you have a wife or a girlfriend who are going on these girls trips You have now been advised what goes on in these girls' trips. She's going to deny it, and I would strongly recommend that you guys not bring it up because it will lead to a fight. It will lead to uh, trust issues. Do not bring it up with her. But be advised in the back of your mind that this is what goes on those trips. And moving forward, I would not advise. Number one, if I had a woman... And she is going on a trip without me. We're not going to be together too much longer. Why would I let my woman go on a trip without me? Number one is the question. But a lot of you sent men are allowing your women to just do whatever they want. And that's really not how it works. I understand that there's a partnership and things like that. But there are certain things you need to put your uh, foot down. Why the hell is she going on a trip with her girls and you and her haven't been on a trip in a while? It makes no sense to me. I'll be damned if my wife is going on a trip uh, without me. I'm not married, but again, if I was, I'd damn that. Damn that. Matter of fact, a lot of my girlfriends, when they get married, I, I create distance. Because no matter how long I've known them, a lot of my female friends I've known since I was a child because we're military and, you know, we have a stronger bond than regular civilian kids. And um, a lot of my friends that are married, we keep distance. I only talk to them as if they contact me, but I am available. I'm on Facebook. They, they, They know where to find me. But the point is I keep distance because it causes a lot of problems with these insecure men. Um, that don't understand the dynamics of it. Um, Funny thing is, uh, when you're a military brat or a person that's born into the military, and let's say two people, 
were both military kids or whatever, and they got married and they lived a light long. We all understand that. There, there's no uh, jealousy or anything about that because we were all kids together. I've got um, uh, a good buddy of mine. We went to Catholic school together and we went to DOD school together. And uh, beautiful, he's a Chiefs fan. Beautiful, him and uh, his wife, high school sweethearts. Beautiful grandkids, beautiful kids, number one. And, you know, we see them on Facebook all the time. We always, you know, we're not talking all the time, but, you know, I see the kids and I, you know, and they, 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 those kids make me smile all the time. But there's no jealousy. If, if I was going to go someplace with his wife, which we all went to high school, he isn't worried about, oh, well, you know, my, my wife might be having an affair. No, no, we, we, we don't get down like that. You know, we're just one big family and uh, it's no big deal. And we do that. But it, it's just a different type of bond. That's what I tell you guys when I'm on different platforms and shows, we cannot assume everybody was born in a type of poverty or uh, the hood. I can't identify with hood mentality, okay? My mom loved me so much, and my mother was a widow. There's a big difference between being a single mother, and a lot of single mothers are single mothers by choice. A lot of them today, there are single mothers that maybe their boyfriend got killed or whatever. A single mother, in my opinion, And my understanding is a woman who is not married and has decided to raise a child on her own. Okay. A widowed mother is a woman that was married and lost her husband. Okay. And yes, I put bigger connotation on somebody being married than somebody who isn't married. Okay. Uh, I put a post out a couple months ago where I told people, stop inviting me to baby showers if the parents are not married. I do not want to go. I'm not co-signing on that bullshit no more. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to go anymore. If these people are not married, do not invite me to baby showers. Okay? Do not invite me. Don't want to do it. Don't want to, don't, don't invite me. So, uh, my, uh, my point with that is the fact that you know, here we are with these women that are negatively talking about men that they do not want. We've been disrespected for over 40 years. And I'm going to show you how good an actor Danny Glover is, Lawrence Fishburne is, and some of these great actors that are out there. When they play a role that is so believable that it affects their career moving forward, that's a damn good actor. And if you guys don't know, I took acting in college and I was a thespian in high school. I, I, I enjoyed that shit, right? Playing different roles and stuff. But the fact of the matter is, like I try to tell people, the movie What's Love Got to Do With It, it wasn't all real. It was based on factual things. But if you know anything about physics, you cannot break somebody's jaw And they're going to go on stage and sing. But this is how delusional American women are nowadays. And it's so sad. But the good thing is these women are waking up. Sierra just put out a song talking about to the independent women and all something like that. And the funny thing about this thing is this. A lot of women now are seeing what we've been trying to tell them. It is no fun being independent. I'm a single man. And yes, I'm going to be all right at the end of the day. But I would prefer to have a partner. It would make things a lot easier. I do not want to go out there and keep meeting random women and having sex with random women and, you know, doing that. Because number one, it's dangerous. There's nothing like having in-house, fellas. I'm always going to promote marriage. I'm always going to promote that. Okay. There's nothing cool about growing old by yourself. Okay. You know, I understand young people. I was there. I had my day. I'm not, I'm not going to say I didn't. I had my day, but I realize the older I get that I need to have somebody here with me. 
my dog, my cats, I love them to death. But if I fell out in a heart attack, nobody's going to find me here. And this isn't just applicable to the fellow. This is applicable to the ladies. Ladies, Jesus Christ, I'm glad a lot of you guys are waking up. But you need to wake up a lot sooner and start telling your daughters, don't make the same mistakes you made. It is a fact. When something is used, you bought it new and you're you and you use it. It does not maintain its value. It doesn't. It loses value. It is a fact that as as much as women get older, they lose their sexual market value. So I'll give you a, a, gr- a great example of that. If I had a choice at 50, I'm going to be 53 years old this year. If I had a choice between a 51-year-old woman and a 40-year-old woman, right? And they're very similar in their body build, right? Who do you think I'm going to choose? You're damn right. I'm going to choose a 40-year-old. I'm going to choose a 40-year-old because men are visual. Men are visual. I do not want to deal with the 51-year-old for the simple fact that we may clash heads due to our experiences, due to what we will tolerate. Not saying that a 40-year-old uh, woman isn't mature. But the mileage on her body is less and so on and so forth. And I know there's going to be some feminists saying, well, that's some bullshit because you got a lot of miles on you. Men do not lose their sexual value as they age. Their value if they were doing the right things, increases their monetary value, whatever. That's why men can have children up until we're dead. Women cannot bear children up until they're dead. They can only bear ch- children at a certain amount of time. Everything has, has a shelf life with women. Okay, That's just a fact. That's just a known fact. You can fight it all you want. So again, fellas, these women are going on these trips and it has been found out and it's been going on for over 40, 50 years. And the difference is they don't advertise it. We do. Even during that Super Bowl night, I saw those young fools videotaping and showing what is going on. And I told the young man, please do not put that up on YouTube. Please do not put that out. You know, I'm, I'm not one to tell him how to live his life. But be prepared that you're going to see a lot of these renadreds and these bamboo massage videos are going to start to emerge. And the truth is come, it's coming out. Because notice that when, when, when the women deflect, they're usually talking about they're doing probably the same exact thing. It's been going on for years. I'm not mad at anybody. You're a grown person. You know, if that's what you're going to do with yourself, go ahead and do it. But notice you do not see men complaining and making videos about, oh, you're a, you're a predator and you're doing this and you're doing that. You don't see men doing that. And supposedly we are men that you guys do not want. You don't want us men. We're no good. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you know, and, and it's real crazy because I always get in a debate, especially with these younger women, and they use that playbook. Oh, oh my God, men are so abusive. They're so narcissistic. I always ask them, have you ever been in an abusive relationship? No. Have you ever dated a narcissist? Well, no. Oh, huh. that's interesting. So where are you getting this uh, thing? Well, you know, men are de- you, 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 you're generalizing. You're generalizing. Not all men do all that. Are there some narcissistic men out there? Yes. As a matter of fact, we've raised two generations of young men that no longer use their paternal logic that is instilled in them as men. And I'm not blaming women and mothers because they can only teach what they can teach. Women are emotional. And even in my military career, I saw the shift in the trend in how these young men would come into the military. And they were so emotional. When I was in the military, and I was raised by a a widowed mother 
who wasn't dealing with no simps. My mother was not tolerating no simps. Okay. We were patterned after her father and other positive men that she brought around us. Not her boyfriend. I never even thought my mom dated. I, it was a shock to me when my mother said she was getting married. Because we never saw the guy. Okay, me, my brother and I. And again, ladies, it's not what you do. It's how you do it. Okay. So. This person. Narcissistic and. oh, How. These men would come in when I was in the military. Lost my train of thought there for a second. When I was in the military, and you had these old school sergeants and stuff, and they would just tell you, shut the fuck up. And as a man, my logic dictated, this man is in charge. He's stronger than me. I'm not going to challenge. I'm just going to be quiet. When I started seeing the trend shift, and I would tell a young man to shut the fuck up or whatever, they always wanted the last word, just like a woman. And I would have and I would have to repeatedly tell him, shut the fuck up. And I would have to get in his face and and show him my dominance over him, not only in rank, but in power. And it's sad. It's sad. So I can't take that away that, that they, that's the way they were raised. But when I hear women complain about the way men are today. The question is, who is raising them? And yes, you're going to have women that say, well, where are the fathers at? That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter where the father's at. You can't blame a man uh, that isn't there for how you raised the kids and how they turned out. And, and where's the proof? My mother, widowed woman raising two men. She couldn't teach us how, how to be a man. But she surrounded us with positive men that did. And yet, I'm not an emotional type person. I'm every bit of a traditional man. I will put my foot down. I I am logical in my movement. My mom raised two successful men into society. How many of you ladies can say that you've done the same? Quite a few of you probably can say that. Quite a few. I cannot legitimately sit here and give any credit to my father other than the fact that because of him, I am because of him, I am here. But because I lost my father at a young age. And that is a legitimate excuse for him not to be here. Still did not give my mom the excuse to raise piss poor young men. It didn't give her the excuse. So when people used to feel sorry for my brother and I because we had lost our father. uh, And a lot of people during the Vietnam era had lost their fathers. Don't feel sorry for us. I used to tell people, don't feel sorry for me. I feel more sorry for the people that have a father that's right around the corner that doesn't do anything for them. Just wrap your mind around that. That here you are a child and your father is right around the corner and for some apparent reason doesn't do anything for you. Doesn't do anything. There's an old saying, how do you know who your, who your daddy is? Because your mama told you. Think about the countless young men that are involved in paternity fraud because the man that they thought was not was their father was not their father. Think about the 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 mental anguish of these young girls who were raised without their fathers in their lives. They do not know how they're supposed to be treated by men because their father did not teach them how to be treated by men. It's a sad, sad game in a sad, sad world. But anyway, guys, look, I, I'm going to wrap this up a little bit early. I got some stuff to do. I want to hit to the gym. I want to get some stuff done. It is cold and uh, raining here in Moreno Valley. I uh, went into my garage and there was a wildcat in there. And instead of running him off, I went and got him some food and let him you know, just sit in there and do what he's going to do. I was surprised he actually came out, came up to me. I guess I'm the cat whisperer. But hey, if you guys are in need of therapy, seriously, we don't talk about this enough in the black community. If you're in, if you're in need of therapy, Please, please go get therapy. 
uh, I got therapy, but I also have a degree in, in social and behavioral science. Okay. And the funny thing is my therapist in, in the Dominican Republic through the VA, through the, the foreign medical program, the FMP, um, I went to her and she diagnosed me with emotional trauma. And I have emotional trauma because I'm estranged from my kids, right? Uh, and it's not really an issue between me and my kids. It's between me and the mother, okay? And that's one of the problems that I have because uh, what was done to me was one of the worst things that you can do to any man, in my opinion, was to estrange the father from the son, from his kids, even if it's a daughter. And yet you take all that money and child support, finance, because you can't make a man be, uh, be a father if he doesn't want to be one. But you take all of that financing and you put all the credit on yourself. Brainwash the child against the father. And then eventually the truth does come out. And what my therapist saw was that I was emotionally uh, I'm, I'm emotionally damaged and traumatized because we were talking about, and I don't mind talking about this. We were talking about, you know, you know, um, put it like this. If I am so enraged at my other side, and like I said, I blame nobody but me because I put myself in this position. And that's another problem that we have in our community. No accountability. Nobody wants to take accountability for their actions. At the end of the day, I put myself in a situation to where I brought a child into the world. However, I did not run from the responsibility. I dealt with the responsibility. My issue is the fact that the mother lied to the child. Not only has estranged the child from myself, but now that the truth has come out, the child is estranged from her. And it's damaged a lot of people. And my r- rage is that if I ever saw this woman, her parents, I think I would lose it. And my therapist saw that I had that within me because everybody knows me. I'm a happy go lucky guy, but the people that really know me though, like when I'm done, I'm done and I lose it. You would literally have to get a gun and put me down because that's how enraged I get. Okay. So, uh, my point is everybody needs therapy. Okay. And I made a suggestion that, Hey, you know, I need to get this off of my chest. You know, I, I may never recover. I may never recover from this damage that has been done to me as a parent because that is the worst thing you can do to a parent is take their child from them. And I don't know why women think because they birth children that they are the sole parent. That is not true. That is not true. Men feel just as much as women. So my point is this, you guys. We need to get more therapy within our community for those that need it. And even if maybe, and maybe you don't need it, maybe you don't know, but are you a doctor? You're not a doctor. And so even when I was down in Dominican Republic, I was seeing my therapist three times, uh, once a week, once a week, I was down there talking to her. And now we have the, uh, internet and stuff like that. I just got done talking to her before I actually did this show. And I'm going to continue to do that because it makes me feel better as a person. Will I ever get over it? I don't think so because I'm one of those people that uh, I hold on to grudges and I never forget. And I know a lot of my friends say, yeah, you know, you got to let that go. No, I don't think I'll ever let it go because everybody's going to react differently to a certain situation. Okay. Um, I just pray I never run across uh, my uh, my son's mother and uh, the parents. I just pray that I don't do that. Um, and if I happen to do it, my logic says just walk away. Don't say a word, just walk away. But to be villainized and do that, and it's not really, you can villainize me all day. I don't have a problem with being being a villain. 
Uh, matter of fact, I like playing the villain. Ric Flair is one of my all-time greatest villains of all times, and he's the greatest that ever did it. So I don't mind being a villain. It's seeing the anguish on my son's face when everything that he was told was debunked and he realized that he was lied to. If a child is going to find out that their father is a dirtbag, that's going to happen sooner or later. And they're going to make their own decision. So ladies, I'm going to tell you, do not, do not badmouth the father in any circumstance. Just like men should not badmouth the mothers. Not once can anybody say, openly, have I badmouthed my children's mother, because that's a reflection of me. If she a hoe, if she this, is she that, and I had children with her, how does that make me look? Logic, people, logic. So uh, my point is everybody needs therapy. Everybody needs somebody to talk to. And I strongly, strongly recommend getting therapy for people because I'm walking around as a ticking time bomb, according to my therapist. I'm a ticking, I'm literally a ticking time bomb. And you know what I realized? She was right. I am a ticking time bomb. And right now, she is trying to defuse me. And I am thankful. I am so, so thankful. So anyway, you guys, do not listen to the hypocrisy of these black women out here that are against the passport bros. Passport bros, get your passports. Get out there. Get to the Dominican Republic next Super Bowl. I'm telling you, you will enjoy that recommendation. Go find happiness out there because it is out there for you. I'm Donovan Sadiq. I'm the Recovering Democrat. Do not forget, check me out on the Demetri K Show on Sundays, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I contribute there. You'll see me and Demetri go at it, and it's pretty good, and uh, she has a really good platform. And don't forget the African Diaspora News Channel as well. That's a nice, nice platform to be informed of a lot of things that is actually happening. Peace and love to uh, Postinus that recently died from De La Soul. Um, he was with, dealing with an illness, I believe, and he passed away uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, great music. All right, you guys. Have a great one.